Greyhound Company's first route began in Hibbing, Minnesota in 1914, and the company adopted the Greyhound name in 1929. Greyhound has been based in Dallas, Texas since 1987. In October of 2021, Greyhound became a subsidiary of German Transportation Company, Flex Mobility. Hi guys, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, here with you for another episode of Toy Talk and another adventure in the diecast replica world. Today, I want to talk about the Greyhound Bus Company. Not really the company itself, but the famous Greyhound Scenic Cruiser. So go on and smash the like button and let's get to it. While many bus builders were trying to improve the ride and visibility of their buses, the railroads were ahead of them with a visionary by the name of Cyrus Osborne of General Motors Electromotive Division. Cyrus conceived the idea in 1944 while traveling in an EMD built Denver and Rio Grande Western locomotive through Glenwood Canyon in Colorado. He recognized the wonderful views the passengers could enjoy from a panoramic dome. Cyrus's idea led to building the first successful railroad dome car, thus paving the way for the scenic cruiser. Other bus builders were designing their own version of a dome bus, so not to be left out, and using Raymond Lowy's original design for a dome bus, Greyhound with General Motors Truck and Coach Division, plus 10 years in development time, built the first prototype scenic cruiser. After the prototype was approved, General Motors built 1,001 of the scenic cruisers between 1954 and 1956, exclusively for Greyhound, to show the world how great American bus travel could be. Greyhound presented the scenic cruiser as 62 ways to enjoy traveling by bus. The 43-passenger Gold Stripe bus featuring air conditioning, panoramic windows, a complete restroom, and air suspension ride. It's such a pleasure to ride the bus and leave the driving to us. Became Greyhound's slogan thanks to the revolutionary comforts of the scenic cruiser. Ah, comfort in travel. Raymond Lowy's original design from 1944 showed a 35-foot double-decker bus. Greyhound went further and built a tandem axle 40-foot prototype called the GX2. This was a small problem, as most states had a 35-foot limit on bus length in the early 50s. So, Greyhound had to convince these states to change their length laws before Greyhound could operate the 40-foot scenic cruiser in those states. <laughs> the Greyhound Scenic Cruiser was produced in a joint venture between the Greyhound Bus Company and General Motors. The Scenic Cruiser was designed at GM as a model PD-4501 when it made its debut in 1954. The bus was the first 45-passenger bus of its kind. General Motors sold the Scenic Cruiser exclusively to Greyhound and built 1,001 units of the famous bus. Besides air ride suspension, other creature comforts incorporated in the Scenic Cruiser were body contoured seats filled with foam rubber, air conditioning, and for the first time ever, an onboard bathroom. Passengers in the raised deck had an unobstructed view of the scenery passing by for great scenic enjoyment. The drivers benefited also with a more powerful diesel engine, better transmission, and power steering. The mechanics benefited too, 
When a breakdown occurred due to an engine failure, the mechanics could change out a power unit in hours, not days. The engines were mounted in such a way that they could be unbolted, removed, and a new engine bolted in the place of the old engine. The many lines and electric cables were reconnected using self-sealing quick disconnect couplings. Yes, the new scenic cruiser had it all. Sadly, the scenic cruiser had its share of mechanical and structural problems. The problems with the scenic cruisers soured relations between Greyhound and GM. Despite the soured relations, Greyhound continued to buy GMC coaches up through 1964. But Greyhound had no interest in asking GM to produce a second version of its signature coach. After 1967, Greyhound Company never bought another GMC coach. In 1958, the Greyhound Corporation acquired a controlling interest in Motor Coach Industries, MCI, Limited of Canada, and by 1961 had full ownership of it. This led to the end of its need for GMC coaches. Greyhound and Trailways were building their own coaches. And here we go, guys. This is the GM PD4501 Scenic Cruiser made specifically for Greyhound. This is a 150th scale die-cast metal bus, and it was made by Corgi. It is in the original Greyhound Scenic Cruiser paint scheme. It's the blue and the white. Isn't that beautiful? Later on, when they went to the Super Scenic Cruiser, they changed the paint scheme a little bit. And then, for the Bicentennial, they came up with what was nicknamed the Pepsi Paint Scheme, which had a red, white, and blue striping. Really sharp-looking vehicles. You can see the fluted sides in the stainless steel. It's just painted silver, but man, doesn't it look sharp? It's got hard plastic windows with some trim around them that's either a paint or and it looks like it's all silver paint and in some cases it's just it made to look like it's trim it has the tinted windows in the upper section and for the compartment for the passengers so that they don't have to look at the glare coming in but they can see out just great it's such a comfort to take the bus and leave it driving to us their slogan painted right there on the side then you can see the greyhound dog and the greyhound logo Inside, it's got the full detailed interior, uh, rows and rows of seats. Up in here, there is a little box you can see right there, and that is the lavatory, the onboard bathroom. Such a new concept for buses at the time. Also, you can see how it has a lower belly box for luggage and then taller ones here and here. And that's because they raised up the upper seats, gave them more room for luggage underneath. Up top, you can see the roof clearance lights and skylights. There's also the front windows so the passengers can see out the top. Then you can see it has skylights. Really cool for a bus to have skylights to let a little more light in for the passengers. On the back, you can see it has roof clearance lights. They're red and they're individual jewel style pieces on the back and they're individual amber style pieces on the front down to the front you can see it has a passenger's mirror and a driver's mirror now gm buses didn't have traditional truck mirrors they had these kind which are bus slash rv style they did the job but probably the drivers would have preferred to have a little bit bigger mirror it has big orange turn signals the greyhound logo right there it has a license plate and then it has its bus number also this one has a destination placard of new york as this bus was headed to new york city the turn signals are all just painted amber but the headlights the big single round headlights are individual jewel style really nice the front bumper is also its own piece that has been applied after making the bus and it is a plastic piece and it is just put on. Now the mirrors were the only parts that were customer assembled on this bus. 
You had to put the mirrors on yourself. Everything else came fully assembled. On the passenger side, you can see there's the door. It goes right out over top. And it looks like that bumper's actually in the way. But maybe the bumper went with it. You can see steering wheel inside. You can see the bus number E-1096 and Scenic Cruiser Service. The graphics are outstanding. Corgi did a great job on the graphics on this bus. The back you can see the grills. Also you can see the little marker light. Really, really nice how they put all of this extra detail in it. The Scenic Cruiser was such an icon. And here's the back of the bus. It's got Greyhound with the logo and then the bus number in a couple of places. Roof clearance lights up there. And then you can see it has the brake lights and turn signals. They're red and amber. And then the rear bumper. Also you can see a license plate and the grill for the engine. Underneath this bus, not a lot of detail, but then again, there really isn't a whole lot to them. They had a flat floor because it has a rear engine bus, single drive axle, and then this was a tag axle, and it had duals. This bus ran duals instead of singles on the second axle, which is common today. Then it had the air ride front suspension and rear suspension. The bus does not steer, but it has plastic wheels and a hard rubber tire on them with a really nice tread pattern. Also, there's a serial number, and this one was 0546. Corgi did a great job with this bus. They did a great job with the tooling, they did a great job with the interior, and they did a great job with the graphics. And that is the 150th scale GM PD4501 Scenic Cruiser for Greyhound. It is a destination of New York City and it is bus number E-1096. Talk about a great addition to anybody's collection. The Greyhound Scenic Cruiser revolutionized bus travel with its air suspension ride, air conditioning, comfortable foam seats, and many other amenities. Greyhound made their slogan, take the bus and leave the driving to us. Come to life with the Scenic Cruiser. MCI has moved way ahead of the original 1955 Scenic Cruiser in design, passenger comfort, and power plants. Buses today offer the passenger and driver unparalleled comfort and drivability. However, the Scenic Cruiser will not be forgotten. What will the future hold for buses when the all-electric bus hits the highways and byways of America. Thanks for watching. I'm Logan, the 64 the Gear Jammer Skill, and I'd really appreciate it if you would take a moment to subscribe to my channel, share this video, and smash the like button. See ya in the next video.